Hello, and welcome to Studio 420 at the Father Ryan Arts Center of Focus on Renewal. I'm your host, Jim Critchfield, and the program director at the Arts Center, and I want to invite you to explore the many opportunities we have waiting for you from theater, music, and dance, to visual arts, and many other creative arts. The Father Ryan Arts Center, located in the heart of McKees Rocks, only minutes from Moon Township, serves the entire region of the Western Allegheny County region. And the people who want to explore their artistic development through classes, workshops, and performances. The Father Ryan Art Center's mission is to inspire, empower, and enlighten through the arts, which we accomplish through providing professional, high quality instruction and performances. We also have a beautiful state-of-the-art theater and a wonderful lobby cafe area for parties, meetings, events of all kinds. You can learn more about the Father Ryan Arts Center by visiting our website at www.fatherryanartscenter.org or call 412-771-3052. And now, on with the show. Hi, and welcome to this edition of Studio 420 here at the Father Ryan Arts Center. My name is Jim Critchfield. I'm the program director here, and I'm also your host for today's show. Today we have a very special guest with us, an artist here who is teaching our yoga classes here at the Father Ryan Arts Center, and this is Diane... Maciosi. Maciosi, thank you. I know her by her first name, but not her last very well. Maciosi, I've learned it. There now, you uh, thank you. Uh, you're from the North Hills, right. and what I'd like to know a little bit about is how you got started with yoga, first maybe just taking a class, I don't know if that's the case, and then you started teaching. Or did you start teaching before you took a class? No, no, I had been practicing yoga for several years, and it wasn't until I broke my back. Um, I'm an equestrian, and I fell off my horse, and I broke my back, and I used yoga as therapy. And I just kept following it, following it. And it was the advice of a student, a fellow student in class one day who told me I should be a teacher. Wow. And I told her I didn't want to be in front of the classroom. And now you and are. five years later, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you studied for how many, five years? I studied, I practiced yoga for close to 20 years. Oh, okay. And it took me a year to do my 200-hour registered yoga teacher training. And you've been teaching then for how long? I've been teaching for about four, four or five years. Wonderful. Yeah. And you've been here for about a year and a half? Yes, like that? yes, pretty much since the beginning. Wonderful. And in the beginning, it's October of 2008 when we first opened the yeah. Arts Center. If you don't get a chance, have you, if you haven't gotten a chance, please come down and see the Arts Center. It's a wonderful place yes. to be. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit more about uh, what drives you to do yoga, not only because you, broke, you, you had a broken back, right, right. but what has caused you to want to continue to do it? The students, I have this goal to reach out to as many people as possible, uh, especially people who would never go into a yoga studio, perhaps, or are afraid of yoga, that they're not flexible enough, or they're not young enough, and my goal is to reach as many people as possible, which is so wonderful about being here at the Father Ryan Center. I get to reach out to so many different people, all different ages, and levels, and sizes, and they are, my students are my inspiration, and the reason why I keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about, um, age differences in the classroom and if there are different age groupings for classes. Mm -hmm. uh, do you also know about the time and schedule that your class will be in the coming, in the coming, uh, uh, what, uh, what would it be, spring? The spring, the spring term, which I believe starts in January. I do not know the time of my Saturday class yet. However, my Wednesday class is a gentle class. It is at 10 o'clock on Wednesdays here at the Father Ryan Arts Center. Um, even though it is a gentle class, I have, younger to older, to retired in their 70s. So it's definitely um, a gap in the ages, but it's a gentle class, so anybody could do it, whether you're 20 or whether you're 70. My Saturday class is somewhat gentle. It goes between a gentle and a yoga one, but I have all different ages, sizes, shapes. I listen to my students. I, I do, I listen to my students when they say, this is bothering me or I need you to work on this or I'm not too flexible here and then we work on it and I get to watch over the period of the 10 to 12 weeks how perhaps they come a little more flexible and really get into their yoga practice. That's not surprising. I mean, you're, oh, you're thank a, you, a good listener, you're thank a good you. teacher, you're 
us, but that'd be good. And uh, just to make sure it's clear, Wednesday at 10 a.m. A.m. Not p.m. We don't have that, <laughs> that late of a class. Although if you'd like one, we can maybe arrange yeah. that. Right. <laughs> and the Saturday time, we'll have to check the schedule. It'll be somewhere yeah. probably between 11 and 12. I'm not sure yet. Something like that. It'll be in one of these beautiful It'll studios. be in one of these beautiful studios. studios. And uh, I understand that you'll be showing us a little bit about what, uh, what's going to happen. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about some of that that you're going to show? What the students today, what we're going to show is the beginning of a class where we just take a few moments to center, uh, to let go of the morning you've had so far, just to not empty your mind, because we can't do that, our mind's not programmed that way, but just to settle into the mat, and then gently begin to warm the body up with a series of exercises. And then from there, uh, the students will be going into um, a deep, energized breath to really warm up the whole body, and then into our sun salutes. Uh, into some warrior postures. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Uh, into sun salutes, into a balancing posture, then back down to the mat, and then final relaxation. Wonderful. And, and what's nice about uh, the opportunity for me to watch some of the classes, mm -hmm. how welcoming you are and all the other yes. students are to new people that come to the. the they, we are. We definitely, I try to keep that atmosphere in the class that everybody is welcome, no matter what your level is, what your age is, and we're all, we're all here together. Well, I can't wait to get to see a little bit about what you're doing uh, in your demonstration in a couple minutes. Thank you, Jim. Oh, thank you. All right. Bringing our hands upon our knees. And if you feel comfortable, allow the eyelids to close. Remembering that sukha means ease, asana means posture. Allow yourself to come within and begin to slow the breath down to become more aware. The breaths become deep, the breaths become even, and the breaths become smooth. As peace rises through us, we exhale, we let go. Exhaling, letting go. We let go of the week we've had. We don't bring attention to what's come, what's to come later. Just allow ourselves to be present in this very moment. All together on our mat. Father, I am center. And allow the awareness to come within the body, from your root to your crown. Where's your body this morning? There's still a little tension somewhere. And acknowledge it. It's okay. You know it's there. Send the breath to the tension and let it go. And bring the awareness and the breath to your mind. We know we still have some swirling thoughts. That shit up hopping around. Go ahead and give those thoughts a little nod and let them drift on past. We'll get to that stuff later. For the time being, remaining present. And then gather your palms at your heart center. And as you bow your head within, help to bring the shoulder to the ear. Just let it drop. Breathe to the left side of your neck. Open it up. Let go. Inhale your head to center, please. And then drop the left ear towards the left shoulder, breathing into our right side of the neck. Once again, try not to allow the left shoulder to come to the ear. And inhale our head to center. Gather those palms back to heart center. Let's interlace our fingers. Bring those hands above the crown of the head.
head. So we're going to open up our shoulders here and then flip the palms to the sky. Let's open up our ribs as we lean to the right. And then I want you to take your gaze over the left. And inhale to center, bringing your gaze to center. Reach nice and long, open those ribs. And let's exhale and lean over to the left and look out over the right. And inhale to center, let's reach up nice and long. Take the gaze to the sky. Let's separate your hands, fingers are wide and then allow yourself to float forward. Hinge over those hips and bring the palms right out in front of you. Round your shoulders, fold within, so loosening our hips, letting go of the shoulders. See if you can walk the fingertips a little further out in front. There we go, there you go. Fold within, let go. Then look towards your fingertips. Pull your navel center back and reach those arms up nice and long. And exhale, fingertips come to the earth. Nice. Now allow yourselves to come to your hands and knees and find tabletop. Think about this neutral spine. Fingers are nice and wide. We pull the navel center jack gently in. Our wrists are underneath of our shoulders and our knees are underneath of our hips. Let's undulate the spine as we round our shoulders, tuck the chin to the chest and find cat. And then we'll lower the belly and lift the chin of the tail and we will find cow. And begin this awakening of your spine, all on your own, following your breath. Remembering that this is a fluid, even movement. We allow ourselves to open those spaces between our vertebrae. Flow with your breath, downward facing dog. And then I'm going to walk around. So thinking about pressing those hips to the sky, we separate our sits bones. Feet are about hip distance apart. There we go. Deep energizing breaths in through the nostrils, out through the nostrils. Let's extend ourselves forward and take a plank or a modified plank. So find that long line of energy, heels are pressed to the wall behind you. There you go, modified plank or plank. Bend your elbows, let's keep them close to the ribs. And then lower heart, chin, chest. Expand our heart and lungs forward, taking a cobra. As we exhale, we're going to bring our forehead to the earth. And when you're ready, come right back up. Take a downward facing dog again. Take your time. If you need a break, take one. This is your yoga practice. So think about, there you go. Engage the shoulders, lengthen your spine. At least five good breaths. Remember, our breath is our prana. It's the life force. So we don't want those short, choppy breaths. Long, smooth breaths. When you're ready, please look towards your fingertips and allow your feet to meet your hands as we come to Uttanasana. Forward fold. Round those shoulders. Drop that crown of the head. You may keep soft knees if we need to. And we let go. We let go of everything we're carrying right here. We let it go. We fold within. And then I want you to slowly begin to hollow out the belly and then roll that vertebra up. Just take your time. And then we allow ourselves to bring the shoulders down into their pockets and find asana. Arms are by our side. Palms are opened up. The feet are deeply rooted into the mat. So let's lift our toes up this morning. So inhale, bringing those hands back out through the crown of the head. Reach behind you, take a back bend. Exhale through center as you open your 
wings and we float forward to Uttanasana, please. Let's bend into our knees and release our arms alongside of our ears and take an Uttanasana. So think about grounding those feet, pull the navel center back, deep energizing breaths, Uttanasana, and float forward, Uttanasana again, please. Bring your hands in front of your shins or your fingertips out in front, and then let's find Audro Uttanasana. Think about that flat back. And exhale, fold. And then allow yourself to step it back to plank. Long line of energy. And let's lower through Chaturanga. So we bend those elbows and we lower the heart, the chin, and we scoop it forward. Tap your toes and come up to down dog. There you go. Five good breaths. Keep those hips lifted. Keep your mind present. Don't even lift the hips a little more. There we go. So we can lengthen the spine. There you go. There you go. Nice work. Allow yourself to look towards the fingertips when you're ready and bring those feet to meet your hands. Coming back to Uttanasana, please. Inhale, let's take an Audro Uttanasana. So find that spinal extension, nice flat back. And exhale, fold within. And then open up your wings and reverse swan dive, coming all the way through tall Tadasana and bring everything back to heart center. Let's inhale out through the crown of the head, and then let's take a back bend here, reach behind you, come through center, open up your wings, and swan dive forward. Bend into your knees again, and take Uktanasana, so take your seat, take that chair, ground into the earth. Pull that navel center back. Exhale, float forward, hinging over those hips. And exhale. Please drop those hands as we frame the left foot. Step it back to that downward facing dog again, please. Hips to the sky. There we go. Crown of the head towards the earth grounding the heels towards the earth. They don't have to touch, but we can ground to them. Roll over those wrists again and take plank or take a modified plank. Long line of energy. Feel those heels press into the wall behind you. <clears throat> and press the hips to the sky. We come back to downward facing dog again. Nice work, ladies. A few more breaths and downward facing dog. Remember, deep breath. We only hold the asana. We don't hold our breath. We let go. Gaze to the top of the mat, please. And feet meet hands again. Uttanasana, forward fold. Rounding our shoulders, letting go. Let's inhale and bring those hands in front of our shins and take Audro Uttanasana. Take a spinal extension. So think about a flat back. Pull the navel center back. And exhale. Float forward again, please. And allow those wings to open. Use that navel energy. We're going to reverse swan dive and we come all the way through tall Tadasana. And we gather everything back at heart center. release our hands to our sides as we think about what kind of tree we want to be today. Well, there's all kinds of trees out there, finding some balance within. So lift the right heel, please. Connecting earth to the sky. The sky and the heavens representing our aspirations. And the earth represents those actions we need to take to reach our aspirations, our goals. Beautiful work, everybody. Nice and strong. Release the left foot to the earth. 
bring those palms together once again and reach back behind you as we take a back bend. And this time as we exhale through center, open up those wings and swan dive forward, come back to Uttanasana, that forward fold, rounding the shoulders, letting go, bowing humbly within. Please place your hands on the earth and think about stepping backwards to that inverted V of downward facing dog. Hips to the sky, lengthen that spine, fingers are wide. Slowly roll over those toes once again. We will softly drop to our knees. Flatten your feet. Walk your hands back towards your knees and let's sit in hero's pose. So we're going to fold over those heels and sit in hero's pose. Hands come to our upper thighs, please. If you need to, and this is uncomfortable, you can bring the block between your knees and sit on the block. Now, gather your palms to your heart, sitting up nice and tall in hero's. Opening up our shoulders, let's bring those hands back behind us. Let's interlace the fingers, squeeze the shoulder blades together, take the gaze to the heavens. Open up our throat, our heart, our tongues. Chin will come to center. Keeping those hands interlaced behind our back, let's fold forward and bow to the earth. Inhale, wind up and come back to heroes, unlacing your fingers and your hands come upon your upper thighs. Drop over to one of your hips, it doesn't matter which one, and allow ourselves to come to our seat. Let's let our legs come out nice and long in a staff posture and give them a little shake. Let's windshield wiper the seats for a moment. Okay, giving those organs a little bit more room to breathe. gently rotate the right arm back down to our side. Always be mindful of rotating shoulders and then bring the left hand down by your side. Let's think about an inversion at this point in our practice today. So let's allow the legs to come straight up to the sky. Now you can keep a bend in your knees. There we go. And we're going to flex our feet gently. There we go. We're going to allow that blood flow to come back to our heart. And you may want to point and flex your feet. You may not. That's okay. It's your inversion. Great way to reduce stress, to let go of headaches, finding a wall to bring your legs up against to, at home, or over a chair. A few more breaths here. And now bend your knees and allow those feet to drift back to the earth. Take your time. Let's inhale and lift our tailbone off the earth. And we're going to pause here for just a breath. So lift those hips off that block. Then reach out underneath of you and slide the block out from underneath of you. See if we can hold a little bit of a bridge here, pressing the hips to the sky. Very mindfully. Begin to roll the vertebra back to the earth, one at a time, at a time, at a time, melting the body back to the earth. Beautiful work. Take your time. Think back to the earth. Feel the connection. Bring your knees in towards your chest. Take a twist to let that lower back today. So knees are together. Arms are opened out into a T, and the palms are facing the earth. Completely drop your legs to the right side. And you may take your gaze over the left shoulder, or you can take it to the heavens. Up to you. So we not only let go of our lower back, we're letting go of our kidneys, those adrenal glands, our liver, all those toxins, stresses. 
bring your knees through center, please. Take a nice deep breath. And as you let go, take the knees over to the left side. And the same thing applies. You can take your gaze to the right shoulder or take it straight up to the heavens. It's up to you. So your hands and bring those shoulders into your ears. And exhale, let go. Please, again, we'll bring those shoulders into our ears and make fists. Squeeze all that tension. And then exhale, let go. And at this point in our practice, we would take a Shavasana, a final relaxation, as we let ourselves melt. So let's roll to our left side. Knees towards chest and head into hands as we allow some energy to come back within the body. Gently press those hands into the earth and rise back to Sukha Asana, gathering your palms at your heart center. Bowing your head to your heart. And may all beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. And may all beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. And may all beings never be parted from freedom's true joy. And may all beings dwell in being equal, free from attachment and adversion. As always, it was an honor, a blessing, and a joy. Namaste.